Welcome back to the second lecture about the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test. In this video we have a look at the details of the test, such as how we can interpret the used statistic, the use of the median in the null hypothesis, and how we can compute an exact p-value. We'll also have a look at the major differences between the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test and the Ampere test. From the previous video, we used the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test to test if the distribution of the systolic blood pressure of group A was different from group B. We ordered the individuals based on their blood pressure values and calculated the sum of the ranks of the first group. Our first group is here called group A, whereas the second group is called group B. And then we calculated the U statistic which is here equal to 1. However, how do we interpret this value? The value of u in this example actually tells us the number of times the observed values in group A are greater than the observed values in group B. In this case, the value of u represents that one individual in group A has a blood pressure that is greater than one individual in group B. If we increase the blood pressure value of this person from 127 to 129, it is now ranked as number 6. The sum of the ranks has therefore increased from 11 to 12, and the U value from 1 to 2. In this example, the value of U represents that one person in sample A has a stolic blood pressure that is greater than two persons in sample B. If the data of the two groups would be mixed like we see in this example, the sum of the ranks would be equal for the two groups. The U statistic for the first group is in this example equal to 8, which can be interpreted as the sum of the following. This person in group A has a blood pressure that is greater than one person in group B, which is true also for this person. This person has a blood pressure that is greater than two persons in group B. And this person has a value that is greater than all four individuals in group B. The sum of these numbers will correspond to our U statistic. We'll now have a look at an alternative formulation of the hypothesis for the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test. In the previous lecture, we saw that the null hypothesis states that there is a 50% probability that the random value from population A is bigger than the random value from population B. If you assume that the two distributions have exactly the same shape, the null hypothesis can be formulated such as the median of population A is equal to the median of population B. Whereas the alternative hypothesis states that the two medians are different, Using the median in the null hypothesis would be okay in this example because the shape of the two distributions A and B are identical. However, if the two distributions have different shapes like this, we can no longer use the median in the hypothesis. Suppose these two populations have exactly the same median value. We therefore know that the null hypothesis is true. But if we collect the sample from the two populations and run a Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test, that test will for sure reject the null hypothesis because the values in sample A are generally larger than the values in B, even though they have the same median value. Such a result would be very confusing because we reject the null hypothesis even though the medians are identical. This is the reason why we should use the more general hypothesis if the shape of the two distributions that we sample from are not identical. We'll now have a look at how we can compute an exact p-value. In the first lecture, we calculated the asymptotic p-value, which generally requires that the sample size of the two groups is greater than 20. For smaller sample sizes, one usually computes the so-called exact p-value. Note that some statistical software tools do not compute exact p-values if the data contain ties. 
We'll here have a look at how an exact test is computed. To simplify the calculations, we will only use three individuals in each group. We first rank the individuals according to their systolic blood pressure. So, what is the number of possible rank values that can be obtained by chance for one of the groups if there is no difference in systolic blood pressure between the two groups? For example, the ranks 1, 2 and 3 is one possibility. 1, 2 and 4 is another possibility. As well as 1, 2 and 5. Another is 1, 3 and 4. In total, there are 20 possible combinations of ranks that can be generated by chance. The number of possible combinations can be calculated by dividing the factorial of the total sample size by the product of the factorials of the sample size of each group. We see that we can have in total 20 possible combinations of ranks for group A which is what we identified earlier when we analyzed all possible combinations. We can now calculate, for example, the probability of observing this separation between the two groups, or a more extreme separation, where we have a complete separation between the two groups. That probability is 2 over 20, since there are 20 possible combinations. This ratio actually represents our p-value for a one-sided test, where group A is assumed to have generally smaller values compared to group B. For a two-sided test, we should also include the possibility that group A might have generally larger values than the ones in group B. Since there are now four possible combinations of ranks, the p-value is twice as big. If the null hypothesis is true, group A may by chance get any of these 20 possible combinations. The probability of observing exactly these four combinations of ranks by chance is therefore 20% if the null hypothesis is true. In our example, the ones in group A all have a low systolic blood pressure compared to the ones in group B, which means that we have a complete separation between the two groups. Since we have a two-sided hypothesis, we'll reject the null hypothesis if group A has either greater or lower values than group B. We therefore calculate the probability that group A includes either the lowest rank values in the dataset, or the highest rank values in the dataset. The probability of observing these two cases by chance, if the null hypothesis is true, is 2 over 20. Note that even though we have a complete separation between the two groups, the p-value for the two-sided test is 0 0.1, which is larger than the significance level of 0 0.05. We therefore need a sample size of at least 4 in each group to theoretically have the chance to obtain a p-value that is less than 0 0.05. We'll now have a look at some important differences between the unpaired t-test and the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test. To compare the tests, we'll use the following example data on systolic blood pressure from four individuals in group A and B. For this data, the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test and the unpaired t-test results in similar p-values. Note. Using the asymptotic p-value in this case is not appropriate since the sample size is too small. However, it is here shown together with the exact p-value to illustrate the difference. So note the change in the p-value of the unpaired t-test when the mean of group B increases as shown in this figure. The p-value will become a lot smaller for the t-test since the means are now much further away from each other. In contrast, the p-values of the Wilcox and Mann-Whitney test do not change at all, since the individuals in the two groups have exactly the same rank as before. The p-value of the Wilcox and Mann-Whitney test does therefore not change as long as the ranks don't change. Also, note that the p-value from the t-test is dependent on the variation in the data. More variation tends to increase the p-value since we are then less certain about the estimated means. 
In contrast, the Wilcoxon man witness test is again insensitive to this change, because the ranks of the data points have not changed. In conclusion, the p-value from the Wilcoxon man witness test compared to the unpaired t-test only depends on how well the data points of the two groups are separated, and not on their actual values. This was the end of this lecture about the Wilcoxon man witness test. Thanks for watching.